Hello, in this lecture, we will create the statement of net position for the government wide financial statements. We will generate the statement of net position from the trial balance, the trial balance here being generated from the information that we have done in the prior portions of this problem for the government wide financial statements and the government wide data. <laughs> that data being over here, so here's the data that we used. We used that data to create journal entries and we posted those journal entries to our worksheet over here into the middle column the posting column basically so we had the beginning trial balance then we had the posting and then the ending trial balance now we're taking this ending trial balance number which is in balance indicated by the debits equaling the credits indicated by the zero down here because the debits minus the credits equal zero and therefore it's in balance and that means that we can take these numbers format them into the financial statements and it should work i'm going to go ahead and un unhighlight this and uh, as we go we're going to find a home for all of these accounts in column aa and that will once we do that we should be in balance last time we generated or we created the statement of activities from this data now we're going to be picking up the statement of net position basically the balance sheet the sheet that shows th where the organization stands at this point in time we have the account and equation assets liabilities and fund balance in this case we're going to start off of course with assets and work through this information so we're going to say assets first first asset is always generally cash so we're going to say cash is our first asset in cell am8 i'm going to say this equals scroll over to the cash item and we're picking up this 318 117 and enter Next, we're going to have the receivables, receivables, and we're going to say those net. So that means we're going to pick up all the receivables. I'm not going to pick up a receivable and then the allowance. We have multiple different types of receivables as well, including current and uh, past due, as we will see. I'm just going to sum them all up. So I'm going to say equals SUM brackets, scroll back over here, and we're going to sum these items up. Now, there's nothing in uh, these two, of course, but I'm going to just sum them up anyways. It can't hurt. So we've got taxes uh, current receivable, the allowance related to it. We have the taxes receivable delinquent, the allowance related to it. We have the interest receivable and the allowance related to it. Note that uh, the receivables are positive numbers. The allowances are negative numbers. Receivables being debit balance accounts and the allowance being a contra asset account, meaning a asset account that has a credit balance. If we represent the credits with negative numbers in the worksheet, then we can just sum these up and it works out well and the debits minus the credits will then have a net debit balance or a positive number on our worksheet in terms of the financial statements at this point because we're talking plus and minus now of 171,796. Next we're going to have due from state government. So this is going to be items that are due from the state. I'm just going to say that equals and we're going to scroll back over and pick up this item here to do from state government and enter. Now as we go, so here's the number by the way, as we go I'm going to scroll back over here and highlight what we have picked up. We found a home for all these down to here. So I'm going to make those yellow as we go and say those have been, home has been founded. Now we're going to have the capital assets. Now the rest of these, or much of these, uh, from the land, the infrastructure, the accumulated depreciation related to the in infrastructure, the building, accumulated depreciation related to the building, the equipment, and the accumulated depreciation related to equipment. We're going to put that all into capital assets and condense that down for the purposes of this financial statements into one number. Again, the, we have debit balance accounts, the asset accounts, and contra asset accounts, the, the uh, asset accounts related to uh, the the fixed assets or the capital assets and those have credit balances so they're contra asset accounts if we take the debit balance accounts minus the credit balance accounts as is reported in that format for this financial statements in this trial balance then we get the 18 uh, 296.24 net that's what we want to pick up for the capital asset net so I'm going to scroll back over here AL 11 capital assets net in am11 equals sum brackets scrolling back over 
we're picking up from the land down to the accumulated depreciation for equipment brackets and enter so there's what we have there and and then that'll give us the total assets now i'm going to sum this up equals sum brackets summing these up and enter and we have the 18 930 937 now let's just clean up the formatting a bit i'm going to highlight all the text here under the assets go to the home tab alignment and indent then i'm going to highlight the total assets in al12 home tab alignment and indent then i'm going to go to am11 i want to underline that to indicate that we are going to sum that item and home tab font and i'm going to go to underline and then we're going to double underline the total assets so home tab font and double underline now if we want to check this number then i'm going to scroll back over here we found a home for all these items and so if we highlight all of them debits minus the credits for all green account asset accounts 18 930 937 that should be equal to the 18 930 937 total assets on the statement of net position next we have liabilities liabilities are going to be all the orange accounts over here so here are the orange accounts first we're going to pick up the vouchers payable and the other accrued payables so i'm going to pick up this one and the and uh, let's see the other accrued accrued interest so these items i'm going to group those together just again to shorten this down so i'm going to call that vouchers and other accrued payables all right and i'm going to say there's a couple ways we can do this i don't want to have a negative number but i do want to use formulas so one way we can do this i'm going to say this equals scroll back over here and we're going to pick up the vouchers payable plus the accrued interest there and enter so there's the item but i want to make it a positive number i don't want a, a credit or a negative number on the financial statements therefore we could go to the formula up top and i could put a negative in front of it but also need brackets around it otherwise it would say negative number plus a positive number and that would not be right we want to take the entire thing flip the sign so that we have the 101 138 i'm going to scroll back over here i'm going to say that we have found a home for this by making it yellow and say that's been done and we found a home for that i'm going to make that yellow that has been done next we're going to have the due to federal government and then uh, the due to state government. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these and scroll back over. And I'm going to right click and paste them. One, two, three, values only. And then pick up the numbers. I want to flip the sign. Therefore, instead of hitting uh, or the equals, I'm going to say negative to take the number and flip the sign. Scroll back over. We got the due to federal. It's going to be that three, five, four, zero. Enter and same thing for the state i'm going to say negative scroll back over and we're going to pick up the uh, state uh, the one three six five and enter and there we have those items then we've got the non-current liabilities non-current abilities and i'm going to put that in one number again i'm going to use a sum function here but again i want to flip the sign so instead of saying equals i'm going to say negative sum of and I want to pick up the uh, deferred serial bonds payable and the premiums on the deferred serial bonds payable. So that's going to be this item and this item, the 800,000 on the 15,866, adding up to a total of 815,866. So that's going to be that. And that, I believe, means that we have found everything. So we found a home for all of this stuff going to make it yellow and obviously we didn't find a home for these but there's nothing there so we're good on the liabilities so we can sum this up i'm going to say total liabilities summing equals the sum of the items above and enter then we can do some formatting and clean this up so i'm going to highlight these items home tab alignment and indent go to the total liabilities home tab alignment and indent then go to the am17 uh, home tab font and underline and then uh, we're not going to double underline here because i'm going to double underline when we get to the the uh, net position number so that's what we're going to have next we're going to have the net 
position, position. And that's going to be kind of like the equity section. So it's kind of like assets minus the liabilities is the net position. Uh, or the assets equal liabilities plus the net position in our account equation and our balance sheet. And first we're going to start off with net investment in capital assets. So net investment in capital assets. Now, now what we know just uh, at this point is that, of course, the net position should be equal to the assets minus the liabilities. So the total, just like it is for any organization, is going to be the assets minus the liabilities. I mean, we can even put that in the total right now. We can say the total uh, net position is going to be equal to the total assets minus the liabilities. Just like any organization, however, now our goal is to break that out into whatever format needs to be broken out. If it was a sole proprietor, it might just be one number called capital partnership would have multiple partners with multiple capital accounts that would add up to this. A corporation would have stockholders equity, uh, possibly dividends, retained earnings, and whatnot. Uh, but in essence, there's two ways we can see this, of course. We can say it's all the yellow, all the blue equity section uh, or the net position section and basically the income statement section 18,928,000 uh, or assets minus liabilities. That's what we're picking up here on the balance sheet. That's going to be the accounting equation, 18,928,000. So that's what we're picking up. Now we're going to break it out then by first taking the net investment in capital assets. So that's going to be the capital assets net here minus the non-current liabilities. That's going to give us the net investment in the capital assets. Then we're going to break out the restricted items. So restricted for, and this is going to be given in the data. So we've got public safety and we've got capital uh, projects. So these are going to be the restrictions. I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to indent those. And then we're going to have an unrestricted portion. Unrestricted item. And that should be indented as well. Home tab, alignment, and indent. So these are going to be picked up in the data. So I'm going to say this equals scrolling back over to the data over here. And that's going to be this public safety, 14.4. And the uh, public projects equal, scrolling all the way back over to the data, public project, uh, 82,000. So there are the, uh, those items. Then the unrestricted is going to be everything else. So we know that this plus this plus this plus this needs to equal that. So we need to, we need to figure out what everything else. So I'm going to basically back into the everything else rather than you know figuring that out and summing this up we know what the total is now we can use that to back into this number by saying this equals that number minus the sum of these items close up the brackets and enter so you know in a calculator we just said it's the 18009028 this number minus the 17480158 minus the 14400 minus the 8200 and that gives us the 432470 then if we highlight these it adds up to that uh, 18928 that uh, we need in the total so then uh, we're just going to pull these numbers across basically so we're going to say for the total so that's the government activities uh, business activities we don't have any so I'm going to say some of these and just pull these over Hi, I'm going to drag that down and there and now I'm not going to drag it down here although it would work but I'd rather have the this formula summing up from top to bottom rather than from left to right and then we can format it so I'm going to I'm going to format paint by going to the home tab clipboard paintbrush format paint it right there and then again, I'm going to sum these up, sum of these items, and copy that down. Not to the total again, because I'd rather copy that with a formula going from top to bottom rather than left to right. Then I'm going to underline this one, home tab, font, underline. Then I'm going to sum these up the same way, like this, sum this up, like that. And we can copy that down 
and then again I'm going to copy this summing up vertically and and this actually <laughs> this picked up that form I'm going to sum this up and this will be kind of our double check because remember this this number was was this formula I can double check it here by saying now I want to sum up the equity section like that and it should be the same number all right and then we could format these I could say a home tab font underline and home tab font underline and then I'm going to just hold down control this time so I've got two non adjacent cells highlighted and then go to home tab font and double underline and just do that at the same time and there we have it there's the statement of net position uh, next time we'll move on to the statement of revenues expenditures and changes in fund balance uh, for the governmental funds.